Welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and I travel full time with my cat and my FJ Cruiser. Sometimes we take the travel trailer with us, other times all we've got is our overlanding setup. Last week I took you hiking with me in the beautiful Colorado mountains and we even went paddleboarding in some high wind conditions. This week we're heading to the Overland Expo. You're going to watch me struggle doing some work on the RV. Then I have to bring Samson into the shop and I have to start my very long trek from Wyoming to Mexico. Last week, I shared that my trek down the mountain started off with mechanical issues at camp. So there were a lot of people at my campsite. I don't film people without their permission. So we're tackling this with story time. If you notice in last week's video, the truck and the RV were not unhitched when I was at camp and that makes it easier to leave. Even so, I always make sure I check my trailer brakes, lights, blinkers, everything before I leave. And that morning, nothing was working, nothing. And if my trailer lights aren't coming on, that means I have no trailer brakes to go down a winding mountain road. Uh, luckily, all the neighbors came out to help. We were all tinkering and eventually it just started working. I do know now what the issue was and I'll tell you later, but for now, let's continue to Overland Expo. Because of my mechanical issues, I only caught 20 minutes of the Overland Expo, but I saw a lot of great things while I was there, including the Hummer EV. So that was an earth roamer styled custom built RV that someone had for sale at the Overland Expo, but I was super excited to see an actual earth roamer and to go inside one. The FJ Cruiser has been a staple in the overlanding community since it first came out, so I was really happy to see tricked out FJs, tricked out forerunners, and talk to the owners as well as some of the people and companies who actually built these out. Will I ever do this to Samson? I don't think so. He has a house to tow and that is always the first priority. Speaking of houses, the following Thursday, which is the first day of my four-day weekends, I decided to change the hardware on the cabinetry in the RV. I really thought that this was going to be a simple unscrew and rescrew job, but Keystone did this really weird thing where it's almost like the wood is built around the screw, so the edges of the screw have wood over it. I literally had to dig it out to get the screws out and get the old hardware off. Then when I put the new hardware on, even though I checked and the measurements are exactly the same and the screw placements are exactly the same, the people who put the screws in did it at an angle and so it could not fit with the new hardware that I had. I started digging out holes again and eventually I just got fed up and went for the drill and that made my life a thousand times easier and I was able to get everything done. There were 12 of these in the RV so it took a couple of hours. Totally worth it. I can't believe how such a simple change modernized the RV. 
The following day, which was Friday, I decided it was definitely time to head back to Casper, Wyoming. I was really concerned about the fact that my trailer brakes had gone off. And even though the lights and brakes were back on, I didn't know if that was going to be consistent or what had caused them to go off in the first place. My main mechanic on that side of America is in Casper, Wyoming. So I wasted no time in heading there first as soon as I got there. Poor Samson was thoroughly violated, but it turns out it was just a corroding fuse on the battery. So after this, the guys took the truck into the bay because we needed to figure out something with my roof rack. If you haven't yet noticed, I cut the utility basket off while I was in Colorado. I met this guy who worked with metal for fun and he said, I could cut it if you want me to. And I was like, you know what? Sure. So he did, but he told me that I needed to bring it back to a professional to have them smooth out the edges, repaint it and uh, re-waterproof it so it doesn't corrode from the inside. And the guys did an excellent job so that I could then put my rooftop tent on. The following Thursday, my very impatient behind was in this long line at the dump station so that I could be on my way to Thermopolis, Wyoming, which is where I spent the majority of my time when I was in that state. I ran into a lot of construction on the way there, which just didn't really help my impatience. I was kind of worried about Shadow because he doesn't like sitting in traffic and we had quite a bit of that. Uh, but as you can see, this dude was just chilling. He was only concerned with whether or not he'd be able to take a nap. In due time, the traffic lit up and we were on our way again. At this point, I think we're probably about 20 minutes from Thermopolis, Wyoming. When I was passing through Thermopolis, I remember that my mom had asked me a thousand times to film driving through the downtown area. She just wanted to see what a 3000 population town looked like uh, in Wyoming. As you can see, they aren't exactly missing anything. I just passed a Pizza Hut and a McDonald's on the right. We're coming up on the grocery store and a Family Dollar on the left and further down the street is the gas station. Unfortunately, this is my last day in Thermopolis, Wyoming. I was actually just passing through to say goodbye. I really, really needed to get a move on if I was going to make it to Mexico on time. And I actually just barely made it even leaving at the time that I did. Before we say goodbye to Thermopolis, I want to say thank you to Vivian, Kevin's mom, Ken, her partner, Kevin, who I met in California. These people basically adopted me for the summer. <laughs> Had me riding horses, chasing donkeys, going to my first rodeo, rowing down the Bighorn River. I had an amazing time. One of the things I really appreciated about being here is that we were on complete opposite ends of the political spectrum. And we were different in so many other ways. But we never shied away from having those discussions about our differences. And these discussions, they were honest, they were open, they were hard hitting, but they were also respectful. And I think that is so important. When I created my YouTube channel, I did so with the explicit intention of sharing my authentic experiences on the road. So when I meet good people, I'm going to say so. When I have good experiences, I say so. But when I have bad incidents on the road, I'm going to talk about those too. Lately, there have been people taking personal offense to the fact that I have called out some of these incidents. All I have to say to you is, if you don't like the truth, make something else true. Until then, shut the f*** up. So, even though I left Thermopolis, I hadn't yet put Wyoming in my rearview mirror. I still wanted to see the Grand Tetons in the fall and I was meeting one of my friends in person for the very first time. So next week will be a tale of good people, good times, beautiful places, and if that sounds good to you, I will see you on Friday.
बाय